Hey everyone, my name is Sam, and thanks for checking out this video. Make sure to hit the subscribe button down below, hit the bell notification, and give the video a thumbs up if you get to the end and enjoyed. As always, my monthly wrap-up, I like to tell you the books that I read, my spotlights of the month, and then general thoughts, sometimes serious, predominantly sarcastic lessons or thoughts that I had about these books over the month. So this month I read For a Muse of Fire by Heidi Healy, The Light Between Worlds by Laura E. Weymouth, Say You'll Remember Me by Katie McGarry, An Alchemy of Masks and Mirrors by Curtis Craddock as a reread, A Touch of Gold by Annie Sullivan as a reread, Rosemarked by Livia Blackburn, Nevermore The Trials of Morgan Crow by Jessica Townsend as a reread, Wand Fasted by Laurie Forrest as a reread, Renegades by Marissa Meyer as a reread, Girls of Paper and Fire by Natasha Nye, A Shadow Bright and Burning by Jessica Clues, Tower of Dawn by Sarah J. Mass as a reread, The Star Touched Queen by Roshni Chotsky as a reread, The Caged Queen by Kristen Cicerelli, and finally, The Black Witch by Laurie Forrest as like a re 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 read or something like that. I've lost track of how many times I've read this book, but I reread it again. So this month's spotlights were actually pretty easy for me to pick out and just to pick out one book for each category, really. So that does not happen awful lot. So my most surprising book overall, good or bad, was For a Muse of Fire by Heidi Heelig. Now, part of the reason was being that this was not exactly what I was expecting. Like, I knew it was supposed to have, like, some history elements and some magic and some dragons. That's really all I kind of knew. And I've read her, two of her other books before, The Girl of the Girl from Everywhere duology, which is, I think, quite different. But I think the thing that surprised me most about this was just, like, I wasn't totally sure if I... I was like, going in expecting it to love it as much as the other duology, which I shouldn't have because it's its own series. But I think I was just surprised. I, I don't know if I can totally explain like the overall reason, but it just surprised me. It wasn't what I was expecting to be. I think it was also kind of surprising for me too that I generally like once I start a book, I feel like at the beginning, I'm like, okay, I know how I'm going to feel about this book when I get to the end. And I, I think at like page 50 or so, I texted some of them. was like, does this main character get less annoying? Because I don't know if I can do this book for like 400 pages or something like that. And I eventually pulled through, pushed through, and it ended up really getting better as the book went on. But I think what really, really surprised me most was the inclusion of the music. That I did know, but I just wasn't totally sure how it was going to work. So one of the pre-order swag items that you did get when pre-ordering this book was sheet music is sent to you. So I did have the sheet music. I, I can't read sheet music. It's very cool and pretty looking, though. And you got, like, the audio file of the song. But I wasn't totally sure how it was going to be worked in. And I listened along to the audiobook whilst reading it, which I think was really, really cool because I got to hear someone singing the song. So that was just like, I was like, oh, that's how it ties in. That's really cool. And that was just another new thing that was not in the Girl From Everywhere duology. And I think it's kind of slowly becoming a little more common for people to include those sorts of things in book books, which is interesting to see where that's going to go. Easily hands down my favorite book this month was The Light Between Worlds by Laura E. Weymouth. I did not realize that it was much more of a historical fiction than a fantasy. And it's also a debut work. I also basically just cover bought it because it was so, so pretty. And because it's a Canadian author. So I was kind of just like, I, even if it's, I was giving myself excuses for like, even if it's bad, you want to buy it because. And I honest to God, this is one of the favorite books that I've read this year. It was so good. So many Narnia vibes. And just, so I have so many questions about this. It's also standalone, which I feel like is very difficult to do a good one with a historical fiction fantasy kind of crossover just because you've got to unpack a lot of stuff. And it's not super big. And I just absolutely adored this book. So if you're kind of on the fence, I would really, really highly recommend picking it up. I, I, I'm still not sure if this... Yeah, I'm. It, it was amazing. I'm following this. But she's auto by author for me now after this. And I'm really excited. She has a book coming out in 2019, something about a, tr a treason of thorns or something like that. I don't know. It's, it's going to be in my most anticipated music, uh, not music video, in my most anticipated books of 2019 video in the next couple weeks. So I just, this book like really, really like floored me about the writing and the world and the development and the characters. And it was able to switch these POVs, but also make me like, is this actually happening? Or is this like people thinking it's happening? Like it's a very mind messy book and in a really, really good way. And my least favorite book of the month is, I'm sure if you've seen my other videos, you know that this is going to be the one. However, it's kind of like exception-y. I technically skipped like 150 pages of this book because I felt like it was redundant. And 
I hated this book. So technically it's a DNF and I normally don't include those, but I have such strong hate towards this book that I need to include it. So my least favorite book of this month was definitely Say You'll Remember Me by Katie McGarry. First, this was suggested to me by my friend. I think I've, I've vented thoroughly in my video about this, but like, I'm not a contemporary person. I'm not a contemporary romance person period. I'm also not like a super white people problem contemporary romances. Like the main character's whole thing is like her family doesn't think it's good enough that she doesn't want to involve herself in her father's politics and instead she wants to do an internship of coding. Like that is probably the least like le the nicknames are stupid too. It does not need to be like 500 pages. There is also an unnecessary dog death in it. Fair warning. And yeah, I just kind of hated this and oh, good thing I opened this because I left my bookmark in here. <laughs> but yeah, so this was just not for me. I ranted in my review video about this. I don't think anyone was really surprised that I didn't enjoy it. And I'm just happy I borrowed it from the library instead of buying. I guess that's the positive note of this. So some lessons that I learned this month. We're going to start off with one that I feel very strongly about from Say You'll Remember Me is Drix is the stupidest nickname I've ever, ever, ever heard in a book. First of all, don't, I mean, I understand which they were trying to do, like the irony of naming him like Hendrix and him being apparently a really good musician at like the age of 16 and was going places. But why would you choose as a person for your nickname to be Drix? Like he introduces himself as Drix. If people started calling you that and you're like, no, I fucking hate that. Don't call me that. Come up with a different name. Even go with Jimmy because you could see the J Hendrick and the Jim. That would make sense. Drix, no. Also, stop naming your children very white people names, but then like, like just changing the spelling to be excessively stupid. Like this main character, oh, what's her name? Ellison. E-L-L-I-S-O-N. No, you pick Ellie or Allison. Don't stack, change the A to an E and be like, oh, we're cultured, we're hippies, and, you know, we're probably raw vegans or something like that. Don't, don't do that. Stop doing that to your children, okay? It, people hate it. It, it's like the equivalent of that mom who was in the news because she named her daughter A, B, C, D, E, and then someone made fun of her, and then their defense was like, it's pronounced absidy, as if that's supposed to be some defense. Don't do that, okay? Just... Don't. For Muse of Fire, for some reason, specifically this book, made me realize that I want my Patronus to be a drag. The Light Between Worlds also made me realize how few books, especially in YA, get pretty covers, and then those covers make sense. Like, not people just standing on the cover, like, I don't know, like all the Throne of Glass books and all the Cinder Williams Chima books and all the, was it, the Fallen Kingdoms books. And I'm even reading Assassin's Guide to Love and Treason right now, and it's just two white people standing on the front cover. That's not real cover, first of all. The Assassin's Guide to Love and Treason is cute, I'll give you, because all the doodles on it. But just, no, that's lazy. This is an actual cover. And then there'll be pretty covers, and then you read it, and you're like, I don't understand the point of this cover, though. This one actually makes sense. I'm so, like... And then I looked at the UK cover, though, and I looked at it, and I went, the cover doesn't make sense. And I've read this book now, so... You know, props to the U.S. North American cover designer and publisher on this one, because y'all did good. Also, it's been like three and a half, probably almost a month now, weeks, since I read The Light Between Worlds, and I'm still not sure if that was a historical fiction where the people were actually, like, going to a fantasy Narnia land, or if that was a historical fiction of children during World War II and they were using a made-up land in their head, like making up Narnia, in order to cope with the after effects of World War II. I still don't know, and it's going to bother me. My reread of An Alchemy of Masks and Mirrors is just to, you know, remind everyone, if you are involved in science, I still want to travel via mirrors, so if you could get on that, that'd be super, super cool and helpful. This month I also realized that I need to, like, try and control myself with the amount of rereads I do. Like, it's great that I love the books and I buy them, so then I keep rereading them when I want to. But, like, a lot of the times I'm rereading books because I'm like, oh, the next book is coming out. I gotta be ready for it. And then, like, I don't ever actually, like, it takes me four months to get to the next book. So, like, spread them out, girl, because I think, like, probably two-thirds of the books, if not more, that I read this month were rereads. The Caged Queen just reminded me of a beef that I have with reviewers, specifically Goodreads a lot of the time. It's not necessarily specifically this book, but this book is kind of a victim of this. If I see one more review, a negative review especially, of someone re reviewing a book that has been marketed since its announcement 
as a companion, not a sequel, and then those people give it a negative review saying, I didn't know it was a companion, I thought it was a sequel, I'm going to burn the internet down, okay? That is on you for not reading a basic summary, or in this case, reading the freaking cover. It says it on the cover. Oh my god, like, it, oh. Stop it. You're, I automatically, like, don't look, read your review, and I assume that you just don't know what you're talking about when you couldn't read, like, the first line of the summary or the freaking cover says, companion to the last Nimsara. If your first sentence is, I thought it was a sequel, I'm not believing anything you review in that. It could be good or bad. I'm not buying that because apparently you just don't read. The Sartouch Queen made me realize that it's apparently a... Okay, you, you can actually fall in love with someone because of their writing. And my last lesson this month was from Rosemark. I, I'm not totally sure why and if it's a red flag, but I have a really big obsession, especially with fantasies, but historical fictions as well, of books where there are plagues. It can be used really in any capacity. It's just, I don't know, it's a very weird interest to have, I feel like. Yeah, so those are all the books that I read this month, my general thoughts on them, and my favorites, least favorite, and most surprising. Let me know in the comment section down below what you read this month, and if you had any favorites, or if you've read any of these and had thoughts, I'd love to hear. Make sure to check the description box down below, too. I will link all of the books to their Goodreads pages, and I will also link all of my social media. If you follow me, I will follow you back.